as interest rates go down, as they have for the last 30 years steadily, the bond market has gone up. You're talking the mother of all bubbles because how does the bond market continue to go up? Well, rates have to continue to go down. And we're already, A, we're tightening and moving away from that, but B, they're not high enough yet to where the only way if they really continue to go up is if we see a, a massive drop of interest rates, which that's not going to happen. The Fed loses all credibility at that point. And, the, and you think about the pensions and the insurance companies and the retirement accounts that have been gauged into a 60-40 uh, stock bond allocation, rising interest rates, and uh, but and yet there's going to be this uh, runaway impact on on potentially deflationary impact on housing prices, on on commercial real estate, on the equity markets, and so on. One of the the uh, concerns that many people have who are anticipating, hoping for retirement, is that all their eggs are in these various investment products and funds and balanced. 60-40 portfolios and they've got their neighborhood financial planner that's trying to talk to them soothingly and say, look at the charts for 40 years, for 50 years, things are just generally trended up. Sure, there's there's normal corrections, that's healthy in a market, but then things just go on up. Rick Rule reminds us that the interest rate environment has been abnormal and has continued to become increasingly abnormal uh, over this period of time. And debts and deficits abnormal as well. Currency creation abnormal as well. All trying to create the illusion, as you've described, of health in the lack when, when it's really the internals of the market are just horrible in many cases. Um, so people, I just wanted to let a little two two little data points, just anecdotes, is that just in the past week I've had a rash of referrals to me who are clients of professional financial advisors, and these financial advisors actually are sending them to go get some uh, physical precious metals before it's too late, while they still can, while it's still an orderly, before the rush and crush and the crowds, you know, trampling people literally, you know, uh, figuratively for the exits in the market. And, and at that point when there's no metals to be had, and, and I've, I've never had it happen that way before. I've been onesie twosies. And then also in the same week, another financial planner themselves directly reaching out to obtain precious metals. And I know the name of the company that, you know, this financial planner works for, and they do not support any physical financial, uh, excuse me, uh, possession of precious metals as any option for their investment uh, portfolios that they offer for their clients. So here I've had both professional financial advisors sending, uh, referring their clients to come get metals while before it's too late, protect themselves, and also ones themselves <laughs> reaching out directly to do that. And that's really interesting you say that a 60-40 split, 60% stocks, 40% bonds is traditionally the way that this has gone down. And it's easier for people to rationalize, I think, a rising market forever, you know, technology, better and better investment, capitalism, you, you're more efficient, prices rise, blah, blah, blah. But if you try to really think about what makes a bond rise, <laughs> it's inverse to interest rates. So as interest rates go down, as they have for the last 30 years steadily, the bond market has gone up. You're talking the mother of all bubbles, because how does the bond market continue to go up? Well, rates have to continue to go down. And we're already, A, we're tightening and moving away from that, but B, they're not high enough yet to where the only way if they really continue to go up is if we see a, a massive drop of interest rates, which that's not going to happen. The Fed loses all credibility at that point. And, the, and you think about the pensions and the insurance companies and the retirement accounts that have been gauged into a 60-40 uh, stock bond allocation, you know, this will not end pretty. And, and I really do... I really do believe that before this is all said and done, we will see disorderly sell-off. And to presume that the Fed can can engineer widespread prosperity forever in a soft landing is, is foolish and naive. We are at that point right now where these types of, uh, of best laid intentions need to be reevaluated. And that's why you're getting these phone calls, because I think even the, the advisors, if they're honest with themselves, would have to say, geez, you know, um, you know, nothing goes up forever. And, and the bond market, which has been the greatest rally bull market of all, um, 
is, you know, I think it's about as dangerous of a place to be at as you could put your money right now, which is, you know, you look at, at the U.S. And, and you have currency risk, you have uh, interest rate risk, you have uh, solvency risk. I mean, the, 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 the U.S. government, which is considered the safest investment of all time, you know, we're, we're insolvent, we're broke. Completely and totally, they're talking about rates rising and 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 countries starting to shed them and sell them. So the bond market is is by no means safe, and I think you have lots of risk that people aren't factoring into it. So yes, for you to be getting those phone calls, we have as well. I, I think it's completely normal if I were a financial advisor, and you know, hard assets were something I really didn't put into the equation, I mean, where the heck do you put your money? You put it into cash where it's losing 9% uh, through inflation? Do you put it into the stock market at sky high PEs with that, that, you know, is off to its worst start? And you look at the Russell, it's off to its, you know, its worst start in, in years. The, the NASDAQ, its worst start since its inception in 71. Um, the S&P 500 to its worst start since the Great Depression. I mean, is this the market you want to, to put your money into or the bond market, which, you know, that they're, this is not a safe place. This is not an easy job right now. So I think for them to acquiesce, good for them. I think they're doing the right thing. And if anyone were truly honest with themselves as to where they want to put their money in this environment, um, you know, if you can find some place that isn't precious metals that you feel safe about, let me know. You know, a lot of people say cryptocurrencies. Look at what the cryptos are doing. Why are the cryptos getting hammered? Because Wall Street took them along for the ride. With all the money that was created, a good bunch of it on Wall Street went into the, the financialization of the crypto market. You have these huge hedge funds and big funds that that are invested in not only cryptocurrencies themselves, but the derivatives, the stocks of, of like Coinbase and all of these other things in the crypto sphere are very much uh, financialized through Wall Street. So the purity of cryptocurrencies in many respects, which is, you know, the decentralization and the peer to peer and all of this stuff has been polluted by Wall Street. And I'll tell you something, if Wall Street collapses, if you don't think that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are going to get their rear end smacked hard here again, I think you're making a big, big, big mistake. That's not to say they don't have a future and won't come back. but. I think that a lot of people, and look at all the people who invested in Bitcoin through Robinhood. I know, I know people my age that have, and I ask, why do you do that? Why do you not take possession of them yourself, hold them with your, in your own possession? Well, it's much easier to do it on Robinhood. So you got all these people who have bought, and like the grayscale, and all of these, 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 um, these, these ways to invest in cryptocurrencies through Wall Street. So I think that it's not the safe haven that a lot of people think it is when the dollar collapses and the markets collapse. I do believe Wall Street will drag it underwater with it. And I think people need to think about that a little bit. You don't see massive Wall Street participation in the metals market. You do see manipulation by the commercial banks. It's like the one thing they're holding down should be the key to everybody. They're letting everything else go to the moon, sucker you all in, right, before the Great Reset. But the one thing that they just want everyone to think is crap and an archaic relic of the past, the same thing that was reclassified tier one, the same thing that the big money is quietly engulfing, the same thing that from a, from a retail basis is you can't keep in stock is the one thing they're telling us you shouldn't be investing in. Do you see the misdirection in all of this?